Hi, this is Dr. Lorenzo Neal. I want to thank everyone who has been subscribing. New subscribers, I appreciate you so much. To everyone else who's watching, I want to invite you to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Um, so, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about Pastor John Gray, Relentless Church, and the conflict between Relentless and Redemption Church. And if you miss anything, you can go back to that video and follow up. It was reported that... Uh, it was initially reported that uh, the Relentless Church was being evicted out or had been served papers of eviction um, because of non-payment. Uh, that later proved to be uh, untrue. They were not served letters of eviction. What it was, uh, as people understand, is it being reported as in um, media outlets as well as um, their uh, legal teams. Um Basically, the carpenters felt that some of the things that they believed the Grays and Relentless Church were obligated to do, they did not feel those obligations. Um, and it was mostly a lot of miscommunications and, uh, apparently on, um, Hope Carpenter's side. Just basically the idea that we're taking our church back. We don't believe that they were capable of doing what we were doing. And they have officially stated that or unofficially stated that Redemption Church will be back in Greenville. They will have um, services there by satellite and once a month live. Which means what will happen with Relentless Church? Well, I had the opportunity to watch the stream of Lorena's service today, and I, I got to applaud Pastor Gray and all the things that they, in their vision 2020, uh, some of the things that they want to do with those in domestic violence, uh, victims, survivors, uh, veterans, and all the things they want to do, again, the realm of social action, I commend what he wants to do, and also, um, what he hopes to accomplish with church. And he preached a sermon uh, that was titled, Where Do We Go? And of course, uh, as I didn't listen to all the sermon because I had to get to my service, but I, I kind of had a gist of something was going to happen. Um, so I caught uh, afterwards, I went back and watched and as John Gray can only do it, he and his wife and uh, oh, uh, he also did something about his children. He mentioned what they intend to do with children and health and all of that. Um, so they 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 intend to do uh, do big things when it comes to a community and being engaged in serving this present age. Excuse my little dude. Um, so towards the end of the service. Uh, Pastor Gray, he won't let me be great. Toward the end of the service, Pastor Gray um, got to the stage with his family once again. And I guess they do this at the close of the service. But he had an announcement. And he made the announcement by way of video. And he said it relates to the sermon. Because the question in the sermon is, where do we go? And... He plays the video, and in the video, it states that Relentless is relocating in 2020. And after the video, they just dancing, and they got this live music, and, you know, they, they bopping and whatever, and a Venter leads, his wife leads a little chant, and he says, but, you know, just like he, he, he compared, he, he did a, um, what's the guy from Apple? Um, I, his name escapes me right now. Steve Jobs. And he said, you know, at the end of every Apple presentation, Steve Jobs would say, bull, but there's more. And then he states, there's more, he plays another video clip. This time it's, um, begins with an airplane and goes, to a very scenic view of a skyline of a very familiar city, the city of Atlanta. And it reads, 
Relentless Church, Atlanta. So this dude is going to be doing big moves in 2020. Not only will he be relocating the entire church, uh, Relentless Church, to a, a new campus in Greenville, he is also planning a Relentless Church in Atlanta. Um, I don't really know what to make of all of that. Uh, I applaud him for a big move. That, that is a very big, bold move. Um, my, my general concern, again, Relentless Church is comprised of, it was basically two churches in one. It was, well, where really, actually, it was Redemption Church. Members of Redemption Church who stayed on as the baton was passed to the graves. And they followed through as he changed the name from Redemption to Relentless. And, uh, many of us were not aware that it was a separate entity, but apparently it, it was, a, it was established as a separate entity with a separate board. And in his, in his speech leading up to the videos, he stated out about the families. I think it was 16 families that, um, and the staff and he applauded them, commended them for enduring the transition. And of course, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of issues. Some, there are staff members who said, that, you know, the work, the workplace was was stressful, and one even I think has filed suit. I'm not accurate about that, so I, you know I don't know, but there was a lot of tension. So the question is, what's going to happen at with this with the church? Yes, how amicable will this split be? Because it is a church split, and church splits aren't unusual. I mean, they happen all the time. It's just that this happened within a year and a half or two years, you know, year and a half, two years. This happened. That's, <laughs> I don't know if too many churches splitting right after that. Uh, now, and I've been a part of at least two different church splits that I can recall. Uh, and it's, it's going to be challenging because you have those members and a lot of them were applauding as the announcements were being read and of course dancing and all of that rejoicing. But the question still remains about loyalty. Who, who's the congregation loyal to? Are they loyal to the carpenters and redemption? Are they loyal to John Gray and relentless? Um, there's, it's going to be a schism. The question is, you know, what will happen? And that really, Ain't our business, but you know, the question, you know, he's talking about establishing two campuses, separate campuses in two states. And I, I, I'm familiar with multi-state ministry and campuses. And I know a lot of uh, persons who do that successfully. Um, and it is, it's challenging to maintain campuses, but the whole thing again, I, and, and in my last video, I talked about it being a novice, a novice pastor. This can be a test or a testimony for him, or both, regarding his the endurance of his ministry, um, and um, where those who may accompany him to the new um, location, what would they be looking for? Even though he made the announcements, what they intend to do in twenty twenty with his vision. That's good and great. Um, but I know how quickly some people get dissatisfied with church splits and new church starts and they go back. I've seen it happen over the, <laughs> even at the current church where I pastor. So it, <laughs> I don't know. I'm praying for the brother. I really am. I, I want the ministry to succeed. I, um, I, I pray for their ministry. I pray for, the desires of the people in that congregation, whether they choose to stay or go, you know, I just pray that God's, uh, God's presence, um, goes with them. If it's the will of God, you know, we, uh, the Bible talks in Proverbs that we make plans, but it's God who actually, uh, brings things to, to happen. I think that's Proverbs 16. But either way, you know, ministry is crazy, especially when you're talking about being independent. Um, in my reformation, I don't have to worry so much about, um, that. <laughs> if I, if I, right now, if I were to choose to 
start a new church. I can't stay in the building I'm in. <laughs> if my congregation decides they no longer want to be Methodist, we can't be in the building we're in. We have to go start a whole new building and all of that. So I, I can understand that. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> Lord have mercy. And to those of, those of you who may be in ministry and you may be seeking to plant a church, you may be seeking to, um, to, um, lead a ministry, whatever it may be, be prayerful. You know, don't let schisms like this, um, uh, lead you to do something that God may not have called you to do, ordained you to do, or even enabled or gifted you to do. It has yet to be seen whether John Gray's gifting is as a pastor. Maybe he's surrounding himself with persons who can mentor him and help him find grounding to where he can uh, learn to pastor, because pastoring is an on-the-job learning experience. You don't just even though I went to seminary, um, and I talked about this in my last video, the bulk of my pastoral education and administration, administratively was, uh, right, you know, raising budget. Um, so, um, more power to him and to the Relentless Church family for their 2020 vision. And I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please be nice. <laughs> <laughs> share this video like this video uh if you have not done so i invite you to subscribe to this channel and i appreciate again all the new subscribers and um support us on patreon uh, the information will also be available in the description or if it's not in the description go to a, go to my website lorenzo t uh and you'll be able to find it there follow us on all our social media and uh, just keep us in your prayers. Guys, have a great day.